Hello everyone. Today I am going to tell you the details of oxygen therapy in children. So today I will cover the competency PE 27.17 and 27.9 in which how to administer the oxygen with the correct technique and appropriate flow rate and what are the various modes of administration in various emergency situations. So today you will learn the about introduction about oxygen therapy, what are the indication we have to start the oxygen, what are the various oxygen delivery devices, what are the contraindications and what are the complication or oxygen toxicity effects. So oxygen is a life saving drug. So we should always keep in mind that whenever we are starting the oxygen should be started in proper dose by regulating the FiO2 and flow rate with the proper humidification in a safe and effective way. Oxygen is started to relieve the hypoxemia and to maintain the adequate oxygenation of the tissue and the vital organs as we can assess by the SpO2 monitoring and with the clinical signs. We have to give the oxygen therapy in such a way which prevent the excessive CO2 accumulation and also reduce the work of breathing. Also we should keep in mind that oxygen should be given for proper duration. Whenever patient is maintaining the target oxygen saturation not having the signs of respiratory distress we should wean the patient slowly by the oxygen therapy. There are various methods of giving the oxygen therapy. I will discuss in next few slides. We have to prescribe the oxygen using the target oxygen saturation range which vary according to the age of the patient also vary according to the condition of the patient and various diseases need the different oxygen saturation target oxygen saturation. Example in children and adult 94 to 98% we should maintain. In neonates either preterm or term 91 to 95% target oxygen saturation we should maintain. Above 95% they will develop the oxygen toxicity and below 90 or 91 they will develop the hypoxemia. Again, it vary according to the disease. Example, in congenital heart disease, variable target saturation range. Example, in cyanotic CSD, more than 70%. In complicated cyanotic CSD, more than 70% is the target oxygen saturation range because we know unoperated cyanotic CSD, they will not have the uh, saturation range above 85 or 90 percent even with the full support of the oxygen. Oxygen therapy is indicated in various conditions in which patient is developing the hypoxemia decreased level of oxygen in the blood due to various acute condition example in shock, sepsis, major trauma. When we are resuscitating the baby during anaphylaxis, carbon monoxide, cyanide poisoning or transfusion related acute lung injury in acute bronchiolitis, severe pneumonia, children require the oxygen therapy. In various chronic conditions, example chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, in which patient require the long term oxygen therapy. Now various oxygen delivery devices categorized into three types low flow system or low flow oxygen delivery devices in which nasal prong cannula, nasal catheters and simple face mask. Various high flow oxygen delivery devices in which oxygen hood or tent, known rebreather face mask, high flow nasal cannula. Positive pressure oxygen delivery devices in which with the flow rate and FiO2 we have to set the pressure also. Example continuous positive airway pressure CPAP in which we have to set the P positive and expiratory pressure. Bi level positive airway pressure BiPAP and begin mass devices begin mass 
ventilation which we are giving during the resuscitation in which we can set the PIP and ventilators in which we can set the all the pressures. So these are the three category of oxygen delivery devices. Now the basic difference in low flow and high flow oxygen delivery devices. Low flow oxygen devices in which the FiO2 varies with the patient's inspiratory flow rate. So these devices do not provide the patient's entire ventilator requirement. That's why use in the mild respiratory distress conditions. While the high flow system in which the fixed FiO2 it flows that meet or exceed the patient's own inspiratory flow requirement. So it delivered the patient's entire ventilatory demand. So use in the moderate or severe respiratory distress conditions. So in the low flow oxygen delivery devices, one is nasal cannula or nasal prongs. Here in this image, you can see the nasal cannula and prongs. So these are the two soft prongs which is attached to the tubings and this is the oxygen tubing which will be connected to the oxygen source and we should keep in mind that size of the nasal prong should be 50% of the nostril or less than this so there should be a sufficient space for the exhalation and this prong should be connected to the oxygen tubing so here in this mannequin also you can see how to fix the prongs in the nostril and this tubing should be fixed to the face and this should be connected to the oxygen source. So here in this video also newborn on the nasal prong and flow rate which we said 1 to 2 liter per minute. This is the humidifier. So flow rate for the nasal prong between 1 to 4 liter per minute. So for neonate 1 to 2 liter per minute we should set for uh, less than 2 years old children 2 to 4 liter per minute and for more than 2 years old 4 liter per minute we can set and we should also keep in mind that with this flow rate how much FiO2 will be delivered to the baby so with 1 liter per minute 0.24 FiO2 or we can say 24 percent oxygen concentration will be delivered to the child with the one liter and with every one liter 0 0.04 or 4 percent oxygen concentration will be increased so it one liter 0.24 and a two liter 0.28 and at 3 liter 0.32 and at 4 liter 0.36 FiO2. So it will increase 4% with every 1 liter per minute. So this is a FiO2 which will be delivered to the baby. It is ideal for the long term oxygen therapy in chronic conditions. Now the advantage of the nasal from it is comfortable conservation of oxygen because we are giving the low flow between 1 to 4 liter per minute. Humidification is not required with the nasal prong. Disadvantage, nasal irritation, nasal obstruction can occur. Now the second device is oxygen hood. Here in this image you can see this is clear transparent cylinder shape oxygen hood. This can be in box shape also and this part will cover the infant's head and the neck area so containing the enough space so baby can move the head and neck freely and this is the inlet port where the oxygen tubing will be uh, inserted so another end of the oxygen tubing will be connected to the oxygen source and when baby will exhale gas will leave from this neck area here in this mannequin also you can see how to apply the hood. Flow rate in the oxygen hood should be set between 7 to 15 liter per minute. Here in this video also you can see this is the flow meter where the rate set around 8 liter per minute. So in neonates 2 to 3 liter per kg per minute or 7 to 10 liter per minute will be the flow rate. In infant 
between 10 to 15 liter per minute so it will deliver the fixed oxygen concentration between 21 to up to 100% more than 90% so fio2 more than 0.9% can be delivered with the oxygen hood fio2 will depend on the size of the hood oxygen flow rate and presence or absence of the lid or porthole in the hood so to deliver the higher fio2 we have to set the higher flow rate smaller size of the hood should be used and two port holes and the lid should be in the closed position so higher fio2 up to 90 to 100% can be delivered by the oxygen hood now the advantage of the oxygen hood useful for the small babies in infant can deliver the fio2 precisely there is a no risk of nasal obstruction no risk of the gastric distension no humidification generally required with the even with the oxygen hood but we use the humidification in our uh, nicu picu in all the oxygen delivery devices disadvantage restricted mobility difficulty in giving the feeds and difficulty in suctioning the oral and nasal cavity it low oxygen flow rate less than 6 liter per minute co2 retention can occur so hypercarbia is the risk at the low flow rate another device is simple face mask here in this image you can see this is transparent mask with the side holes for the exhalation and it should be fit over the face cover the mouth and the nose and size of the mask should be proper it will varies according to the age and weight of the patient now in the simple face mask we have to set the flow rate between 5 to 10 liter per minute generally simple face mask not used in the neonates but if we are using for the nebulization or for any other purpose 5 liter per minute rate should be set and for infant and children 6 to 10 liters per minute different oxygen flow rate result in the highly variable and unpredictable fio2 delivered to the patient with the simple face mask that's why it is low flow oxygen delivery device oxygen concentration varies between 35 to 55% so with the 5 liter per minute of the oxygen flow fio2 will be delivered between 0.35 to 0.4 so 40% oxygen concentration will be delivered to the baby and with 10 liter maximum 55% can be delivered with the simple face mask now what are the advantages it is useful for the acute situations and for short term easy to use easy to apply the simple face mask disadvantage it is not prefer in the newborn difficulty in giving the feeding and suctioning it low oxygen flow rate less than 4 liter per minute co2 retention can occur so again this is the complication or disadvantage of the simple face mask another is the partial rebreathing mask here in this image you can see this is the mask connected with the reservoir bag and the capacity of this bag is of 1 liter when the baby will uh, exhale this uh, this is the oxygen tubing connected with the reservoir bag and another end of the tubing connected to the oxygen source so when baby will exhale oxygen flow directly into the reservoir bag it is also designed in such a way that exhale gas from the initial one third of the expiration from the anatomical dead space which is rich in the oxygen will fill the reservoir bag and during inspiration only one third of the reservoir bag oxygen gets empty during the inspiration time flow rate for the partial rebreathing mask between 8 to 15 liter per minute and minimum 8 liter per minute so the oxygen enter the mask to remove the excel co2 and to refill the oxygen reservoir fio2 between 0.6 to 0.8 will be delivered to the child with partial rebreathing mask 
it is suitable for the spontaneously breathing patient and useful in situation where the oxygen supply are limited because first one third of the exhal gas also fill the reservoir big advantage useful for the acute situation short term use exhaled air also conserve in the partial rebreathing mask it is the advantage of the prn disadvantage difficulty in giving the feeding and suctioning irritation in the eyes can occur because tight seal is required between the mask and the face it low oxygen flow rate less than 8 liter per minute co2 retention can occur non rebreathing mask basic difference between prm and nrm is with mask and reservoir nrm also contain the three one way valves so here in this image you can see this is the mask this is the reservoir b and these are the three valves so one is the reservoir valve which is between the reservoir bag and the mask so this is the reservoir valve and this one way valve is closed during the exhalation when baby will exhale this valve will be closed so the room air and the exhaled air will not enter into the reservoir bag and this valve is open during the inspiration so oxygen will be enter into the mask and baby will inspire and this bag is uh, connected with the oxygen this is the oxygen tubing so when this valve is closed this oxygen from the oxygen source will fill the reservoir bag so this bag is filled during the exhalation when valve is closed and oxygen source deliver the oxygen to the bag so this valve allow only oxygen from source to enter the reservoir thus prevent the rebreathing and during inspiration this valve will open and provide the high fio2 now these are the two exhalation ports this also contain the one way valve so these are the one way valve at the exhalation port so these valves remain closed during inspiration so room air will not enter into the mask so these valve will be closed and this reservoir valve will open so high fio2 high oxygen concentration will be delivered to the patient so in expiration exhalation ports open and reservoir valve close so exhaled air will go into the environment so this is the main difference between nrm and prm this also contain the three one way valves so here in this video also you can see these are the one way valve at the exhalation port and this one is the reservoir valve and this is the oxygen tubing connected to the reservoir bag and this is the reservoir bag of 1 liter capacity this is non rebreathing mask now flow rate in the nrm between 10 to 15 liter per minute at 6 liter per minute 55 to 60 percent oxygen concentration will be delivered at 8 liter 60 to 80 percent and at 10 liter 80 to 90 percent oxygen so at least 10 liter per minute rate should be set so the 90 percent oxygen concentration will be delivered at 12 liter 90 percent and at 15 liter per minute 90 to 100 percent oxygen concentration it is uh, used when the patient is having a spontaneous breathing with the severe hypoxia example in the shock respiratory distress or cardiac failure what are the advantage it is useful for the acute situation and short term use highest possible fio2 without intubation can be delivered by the non rebreathing mask disadvantage uncomfortable because tight seal is required between the mask and the face difficulty in giving the feeding and suction and irritation in eyes can occur because of nrm so these are the image of simple mask simple face mask this is partial rebreathing mask in which the mask with reservoir bag 
and this is NRM known rebreathing mass so this is the mask and reservoir bag with the three one-way valve now the venturi mask here in this image you can see the various color code for the various sizes of venturi mask it is a high flow device and oxygen is delivered through the narrow orifice at the high flow it is based on the Bernoulli principle it also provides the preset oxygen to the patient by the jet mixing mixing of the air and the oxygen occur and there are various openings near the uh, nozzle so it allow the room air to be sucked in it dilute the oxygen so these opening size and the main orifice size and the flow rate will decide the concentration of oxygen which will be delivered to the patient flow rate for the venturi mask should be set between 12 to 15 liter per minute and it will deliver the fio2 0.24 to 0.5 so at high flow rate fixed fio2 is delivered by the venturi mask increased rate of breathing does not affect the concentration of oxygen which will be delivered advantage useful for the patient in which high fio2 suppress the respiratory drive and disadvantage it is uncomfortable noisy difficult in again giving the feeding and suctioning irritation of eyes can occur now the high flow nasal cannula or heated humidified high flow nasal cannula this is a high flow device here in this image you can see these are the small thin tapered cannuli and these are the tubings and these are the various color code for the various sizes and the size of the nasal cannula outer diameter should be less than 50% of the nearest internal diameter so the sufficient space for the exhaled air should be there and to deliver the oxygen by HFNC we require the blender and humidification system example we can use the fisher pickel machine for this and this is the image showing the various color code for the various sizes of the nasal prong of hfnc so example green color suggests that prongs outer diameter is 3 mm flow rate in the hfnc should be more than 2 liter per minute we generally start at 6 liter per minute and maximum flow rate which we can set according to the weight for less than 10 kg 2 liter per kg per minute and for more than 10 kg 2 liter per kg per minute for first 10 kg plus 0.5 liter per kg per minute uh, for each kg thereafter maximum flow we can set 30 liter per minute FiO2 we have to set 0.4 and we can titrate to keep the saturation between 91 to 95% in newborn. So this is the air oxygen blender. So we can set the FiO2 and this is the flow meter and this is the oxygen tubings which are connected to the humidifier and we can set the temperature over here and these are the tubings connected with the HFNC. What are the advantage? It is safe, well tolerated. Early use of HFNC in moderate and severe respiratory distress may prevent the intubation also. Disadvantage, abdominal distension occur with this and mucosal injury with the nasal bleeding and ulceration can occur with this. Now the continuous positive airway pressure CPAP. CPAP can be delivered by the bubble CPAP machine. Here in this image you can see the Fisher vehicle bubble CPAP machine. It can also be delivered by the ventilator or we can manually also we can prepare the indigenous CPAP. I have already uploaded the two videos how to prepare the manual or indigenous CPAP. And I have already published a uh, research paper on the effectiveness of the manual or indigenous CPAP. In CPAP, PEEP is created, positive end expiratory pressure. It is the continuous positive pressure is created. It will uh, deliver to the airway. It will distend the alveoli and overcome the collapse, improve the ventilation. So in the preterm baby with the RDS, because of the surfactant deficiency, collapse of the alveoli occur 
so by continuous positive and expiratory pressure this collapse is prevented peep is created by immersing the end of respiratory circuit and making the patient exhale against the column of water so generating the bubble in the bubble cpap machine which is seen in this image length of the immersed pipe determine the level of pressure so in this there is a 1 to 10 cm length of the pipe so generally we said between 4 to 8 so flow rate in this between 6 to 10 liter per minute we can set and we prefer the 5 to 6 liter per minute in pre terms newborn fio2 we should set between 0.21 to 0.8 not more than this and p between 4 to 8 cm of water we prefer 4 to 6 cm of water in pre terms newborn so this is the fisher pickel bubble cpap machine so here in this video you can see this is a blender of air oxygen where we can set the fio2 this is the flow rate which we can set between 6 to 10 liter this is the humidifier and this is the immersed pipe between 1 to 10 cm we can immerse in this and this is the bubbles created so how much length we will immerse inside will create the peep and these are the tubings which are connected to the baby so here you can see this is a cap and this is the mask of the bubble cpap what are the advantage prophylactic use of the cpap therapy in preterm newborn with the moderate to severe rds prevent the endotracheal intubation disadvantage abdominal distension occur mucosal injury nasal bleeding and ulceration can occur pneumothorax at higher peep more than 8 cm of water that's why we should not immerse the tubing more than 8 cm inside the water so peep should not be more than 8 for the preterm babies otherwise chances of pneumothorax can be there now the mechanical ventilation whenever patient is uh, having the respiratory failure severe respiratory distress and not maintaining the target saturation with other oxygen delivery devices then we have to use the mechanical ventilation it works by applying the positive pressure breeze it can be delivered in the different modes volume limited assist control ventilation pressure limited assist control ventilation synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation with the pressure support ventilation in pediatric patient we prefer the patient triggered ventilatory mode as simv ac or psv because less barotrauma and shorter duration of ventilation with these modes so in the video you can see there is ventilator in which the pediatric neonatal and adult all setting we can do so first according to the weight we have to set the neonatal mode or pediatric mode then we have to choose the mode of ventilation then we have to set the fio2 then positive inspiratory pressure then uh, rr we have to set then ti and te according to ti and rr will be set so we have to set all the initial ventilatory setting so it will show in the graphs also and all the settings will be also display over the screen inside and we can change the mode so here you can see this is cpap and psv mode so again we have to once we change the mode again we have to set the all the ventilatory settings and it will display over the screen so these this is the inspiratory uh, limb which is connected to the humidifier and this will go to the patient and this white one is the expiratory limb so initial ventilatory settings are tidal volume between 4 to 6 ml per kg peak inspiratory pressure 12 to 16 cm of water maximum up to 25 or in meconium aspiration syndrome we can go up to 28 also but with more pip chances of pneumothorax also high so we have to keep in mind positive end expiratory pressure between 5 to 6 cm of water 
maximum we can go up to 8 if the patient is having severe respiratory distress and preterms baby respiratory rate depends on the age of the patient example in neonate 30 to 60 per minute inspiratory time 0.4 to 0.5 second expiratory time te directly set according to the ti and rr or we can alter by using the ti and rr respiratory rate and fio2 we have to set the lowest fio2 to achieve the spo2 between 90 to 95 percent Trigger sensitivity, two types, flow and pressure trigger. Pressure trigger usually we have to set minus 2 cm of water or we should avoid if there is a otopeep is suspected. Now what are the contraindications of oxygen therapy? So paraquit, it is a common herbicide poisoning. It is worsened by the oxygen therapy. So, in such poisoning, oxygen therapy should be avoided. Carbon dioxide narcosis, example, in an obstructive pulmonary disorder, chronic respiratory insufficiency, in such situation, over administration of oxygen reduce the respiratory drive and further hypercarbia can occur. So, in such a case, we can use the venturi mask. It also alters the mental stasis, even the complete respiratory failure, so titrated oxygen therapy should be given. Now the oxygen toxicity. Whenever we are giving the oxygen therapy, we should keep in the mind that overuse of oxygen can lead to the oxygen toxicity. Oxygen get metabolized, some molecules convert to the superoxide anions, hydroxyl radical, tissue toxic. Result in the pathophysiological changes occur at the alveolar level, decrease in the lung compliance and diffusion capacity and PO2 levels. It will lead to the alveolar and interstitial edema and alveolar hemorrhage occur and proteinaceous exudate also accumulated. Then proliferative phase occur in which the proliferation of the type 2 epithelial cell fibroblast it is followed by the collagen deposit. So, whenever exposure to the FiO2 more than 0.6, even for the 48 hours, can lead to the severe irreversible pulmonary fibrosis because of the proliferation of type 2 cells, epithelial cells and fibroblasts. ROP in the preterms baby with the RDS can occur with a high level of oxygen as the oxygen promotes the neovascularization of retina can cause the vision loss. CNS toxicity can occur with a high partial pressure of oxygen. So, these are the complications or oxygen toxicity symptoms. Thank you so much. It is all about the oxygen therapy in pediatric patients.